to working in a metro city as an accountant. He comes to his village to meet his parents. Muthu's mother is excited on seeing her son and receives him. Hey Muthu, so happy to see you. Why you did not inform us that you are coming? I felt like seeing you mom, so came immediately. I will leave in another two days. So, how are you all? We are all fine. So, where is Ravi? Ravi? Oh, he is okay. Results have come. He has failed in one paper once again. But he is not at all bothered about that. As usual, he has gone out with his friends this morning. And father is so angry with his behavior. Anyway, leave it now. Let us discuss that later. Okay, how is your work? And how is your life in your city? Did you like that job or not? Looks like you have lost your weight, no? Oh, no. I am fine, mom. My roommate, Jai Prasad, is a very good guy. And we prepare food by ourselves. I prepare breakfast and he cooks dinner for both of us. Is he also working with you? No, mom. He is doing service and he is working under an NGO. Mom, where is dad? He left home immediately after breakfast. He was going to meet Ramasamy uncle to discuss an important matter. It is more than four hours now. So he should be back home at any moment, Muthu. Go and refresh yourself, Muthu. I will get some snacks and coffee for you. So, how is everyone in the village? Hmm, all are fine, Muthu. Except Ramasamy uncle's father, who fell down a week ago and is not keeping well. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll go and see him in the evening. Kadir Asan arrives home, surprised and happy on seeing his son. Muthu notices that he is excited and restless. Hey, Muthu, what a pleasant surprise. When did you come and how are you? I'm fine, Dad. I came here by 10 a.m. Mom told me that you went to Ramaswamy uncle's house. How is uncle's father? He is recovering in hospital, but still unable to walk. What happened, Dad? You look excited since you came in. Ah, it's a good thing that you came. Hey, Meenakshi, you also come. I have something interesting to tell you all. We need not worry about our Ravi's future anymore. While returning home, I met the panchayat leader. He told me that a thermal plant is coming up near our village and the owners of the company are promising a job for every person in every household in the entire village. Is it not good news, Meenakshi? Thank God, I am so happy. Ravi's future has been a matter of real concern as he is not studying properly and is always failing in one subject or the other. If the company is going to give a job, then the future is secured. I am so happy now. Really, you got a good news for all of us. Mom, hold a minute. Dad, do you know where the thermal power plant is proposed? Are they going to acquire land? Are our agricultural lands and livelihood going to be affected? Do you know there is a process that the owner of the company has to follow to set up the plant? Is that so? I do not know anything about that. Dad, I know that. There are various important steps and process that the proponent has to follow to commission the plant. I don't think even our panchayat leader is aware. My room at Jay Prasad, who is working with an NGO that works in this space was recently talking about the issues around an upcoming industry. If you are agreeable, I can ask him to come and brief you on the process. Will you meet him? Sure, Muthu. I will talk to the panchayat leader, Ramasamy uncle and others. We can arrange for a meeting with your friend. Sir, my son has arrived from city today morning and I informed him about the new thermal plant that is coming up in our village and the job opportunity also. My son Muthu had a few questions for which I had no answers. Oh, how is Muthu? Yeah, it has been a long time. Ah, Muthu is fine. Kadir sir, how is your son? Is he happy in the city? So, what were his questions? He was asking about the location of the plant and if our livelihood was going to be affected in some or the other way. And he was asking whether the proponent was following the government guidelines before commissioning the plant. These were the doubts that was concerning him, sir. Oh, there are so many aspects we need to look at. I have no answers to any of these questions. It appears to be a matter of real concern. What do we do? Muthu told me that his roommate Jay Prasad works for an NGO that is working in this area. It seems he has a better knowledge about this project. And if we are agreeable, he will ask Jay Prasad to come down here and explain all the process. Oh, that would be great. Kadiresan, please ask Muthu to invite his friend immediately. We can also bear his travel and food expense if required. That won't be necessary. Muthu will take care of all that. Shall we plan for coming Sunday? We can invite the panchayat members and the women's self-help group leaders for the meeting. What do you say, sir? Yeah, of course. I'll invite all the members, Kadarasan. Hi, Muthu. Hi, how are you? Just called you for your help. You know something? Only last week, we were discussing about Pollution Control Board, Environmental Clearance and the like and now, it looks like you will have to repeat the exercise once again. 
only with more details so that my father and his friends can understand there is a proposal to build a thermal power plant near my village my villagers are happy because the proponent has offered a job for every family in the village but they are not aware of the other implications of the plant i immediately thought you will be the right person to speak to them about the process involved rules regulations and explain to them about the public consultation process will it be possible for you to come this sunday sure i will be happy to come meeting under the banyan tree outside panchayat office jay prasad muttu kadiresan ramasami panchayat leader and four members four women self help group leaders jay prasad explaining the eaa process greetings to all of you Are you all aware that the thermal power plant is coming up near our village? Yes, yes we, we know. We, we heard about it a few days back. back. And the best thing is that we have been promised one job for one person in every family in our entire village. Yes, yes, yes. this, this is, is a good, good news. news. <laughs> Even I was also thinking so. But Muthu says that there are other aspects that might affect our livelihood and quality of life in the long run. Yes, what Dad says is right. I came to know about this recently. That is why I asked my friend Jay Prasad. who is working in an ngo and knows this subject very well hello everybody hello, hello sir have any one of you heard of the term environmental clearance before no, no we, we don't, don't know. know what is it the government of india has identified 39 industrial projects such as mining port thermal power plants etc which are found to cause environmental pollution and will potentially affect health and livelihood to set up these projects the project proponent should comply with certain conditions laid down by the government under the environmental impact assessment notification so that development activities do not pollute the environment after verifying compliance with the notification and depending on the project category the ministry of environment and forest and climate change or the state environmental impact assessment authority issues the environmental clearance only after which the project proponent can commission or start the project oh is it so we did not know all about this that's why i called jay prasad to give you more information about this thank you muthu i will tell more about this even before expansion or modernization of an existing project or for changes in the product mix of an existing project and its activities project proponent should get environmental clearance from the government i mentioned about environmental impact assessment notification earlier could you remember that do you know what it mandates the project proponent should submit application form 1 pre feasibility report for project clearance to the ministry of environment and forest and climate change there is the expert appraisal committee to which the proponent will make a presentation about the project then the ministry of environment and forest and climate change issues terms of reference for presentation of environmental impact assessment to proponent then the proponent submits draft eia to the ministry of environment and forest and state environmental impact assessment authority later state pollution control board will organize public consultation and submit proceeds of the same to moef Then the proponent will submit the final EIA and final feasibility report to the Ministry of Environment and Forest and Climate Change. The Ministry of Environment and Forest and Climate Change will check adherence of final environmental impact assessment to terms of reference and refer the matter to expert appraisal committee. Then the expert appraisal committee completes appraisal of documents and recommends either for clearance or rejection to Minister of Environmental Forest and Climate Change and finally Minister of Environmental Forest and Climate Change issues the clearance or rejection letter to the proponent Oh there are so many procedures involved in it then why should we worry if the company is going to act as per rules huh here lies the problem because there is every possibility of the proponent not complying with all requirements and so if we are not watchful then we could be in a big trouble later so what can we do for this i mentioned public hearing as one of the points under eia this is where you can actively participate and give your inputs public hearing please tell us more about that public hearing is a mandatory meeting conducted by government officials for all environmental clearance required activities 
Here, the project proponent explains the project to the people present. It is conducted to get the opinion of the local people and interested civil society organizations regarding the project's impacts on the communities, lives and surroundings. Okay, where will it be conducted? Public hearing will be conducted in a place close to the project site, mostly within 1 km radius. If no suitable place is there within 1 km radius to conduct public hearing, then other closest available place near to the project site will be chosen. For example, if there is a suitable place in 2 km radius from the site, the State Pollution Control Board cannot choose another venue which is further away. Okay, that is okay. But how will we get to know about the venue of the public hearing? Before 30 days, State Pollution Control Board will widely publicize about the venue of public hearing in one English daily and one regional language daily. In places where newspapers do not reach, should be advertised over beating of drums, radio or TV. Oh, I see. Should I prepare myself before attending a public hearing? <laughs> Good question, sir. Yes, it is important that before attending a public hearing, read the Form 1, Pre-Feasibility Report, Terms of Reference and Draft EIA submitted by Project Proponent in order to know the details about the project. You already told about the Form 1. What is that? What will be given in that form? In that form contains current use of land, survey numbers, utilization of natural resources, functioning of the plant. These will give an idea about the extent of land to be acquired, its impact on the community and surrounding areas. Okay, should I read the pre-feasibility report? Yes, you should. To know the critical pollutants, project size, cost of project and environmental mitigation cost, socio-economic mitigation cost allotted in project by project proponent. Can I attend the public hearing and also send in the written response? Yes, you can. You can attend the public hearing and also send the written response. One quick question, Jay Prasad. Yes, Muthu. If I don't have the expertise to understand the documents but still want to participate in the public hearing, what can I do? That is simple, Muthu. You can always take inputs from environmental groups and experts who are already working in this space and who have a better understanding of the subject and participate. Oh, okay, okay. So even if I'm not in the same locality, can I still participate in a public hearing? Yes, of course you can, as long as you have valid social and environmental concerns. Can the public hearing of the two projects be held simultaneously at the same time and venue? No, as per rule, that's not allowed. Can a public hearing be postponed? Yeah, it is possible, ma'am. But only when there is an emergency or there is a public protest that procedures were not being followed. But they should give enough time to the public before the next date of public hearing. Sorry, Jay Prasad. I think we are bothering you with too many questions. Don't mistake us. Not at all. It is my pleasure. Nice to see so many people in this village who are interested in this subject. Jay Prasad, is there any restriction on time and how many people can speak at a public hearing? No, there is no limit at all. If the project site is in the boundary of two states, where should the public hearing be held? In such cases, the hearing should be jointly organized for both the states by the respective state pollution control boards. Who can send written responses about the project? Anyone who has a plausible stake in the environmental aspects of the project can send written responses. What can we do if a project has been awarded EC without holding a public hearing? If suppose it happened like that, within 30 days, you can file a case against the environmental clearance at the National Green Tribunal. Oh, so what is the National Green Tribunal? The National Green Tribunal is a court. It is established to adjudicate cases relating to environmental protection, conservation of forests and other natural resources. Is it possible for the project proponent to engage in any activity in the project land before obtaining EC? <laughs> Fencing of the site to prevent it from being encroached and construction of temporary sheds for gods are the only two activities that can be carried out before getting EC. How long does it usually take for a project to get EC? It depends on the size of the plant. Usually it takes one to one and a half years. Oh, that long is it? Okay. So once the EC has been issued, can a project proponent start the construction of the plant? No, 
the project proponent has to apply for consent to establish with the respective state pollution control board upon obtaining it they can commence at what stage can the project proponent acquire the land for the project land acquisition can begin even before the project proponent submits an application for ez how can i find the details of which and whose lands are acquired by the project proponent details of pre acquired lands can be found in draft eia report what are the details can we obtain from eia report draft eia project description description of environment baseline data demographic geological details ecologically sensitive attributes in the study area anticipated environment social impacts of project analysis of alternative resources employment opportunities etc oh okay if the conditions regarding employment csr and others are not followed in the project where should we go and complain you can complain this matter to the the ministry of environment and forest and the state pollution control board is environmental impact assessment report prepared for project expansion also yes as i had mentioned earlier it is required for expansion also and it's called brownfield eia in which baseline study will cover effectiveness of existing mitigation measures complaint status and expected change with comprehensive impact assessment Oh yes yes i forgot what you said that is okay mutu there is nothing wrong in asking again apart from environmental clearance or any other clearances needed for projects yes but it depends on project and project location if it is close proximity to the coast then coastal regulation zone clearance is required similarly it is close proximity to forest area then clearance from forest department is mandatory if there is any violation of the ec process of a plant where should we go and complain Any violation at any stage of the EIA process can be reported to the Minister of Environmental Forest. If the EC has been awarded for a project with violations, then you could challenge the same before the National Green Tribunal. Thank you, Jay Prasad, for explaining in simple terms to our villagers. Thank you again. That's not a problem, sir. It's my pleasure. Any other questions? No. We have learned lot today because of you. We will make sure that our people will efficiently participate in the public hearing when it is announced. we will also require your inputs for it sure sir we are there to help you in all ways possible in order to ensure a healthy environment that would be beneficial to both the present and the future generation thank you so much for coming here to explain about the environmental impact assessment process in a simpler way thank you jay prasad i am very happy to meet you all and thanks for this valuable opportunity the date of the next panchayat meeting was announced by the panchayat leader following which the meeting ended